let me talk about that first list. This is a list of anything diagnosis that's possible. So any diagnosis with a criteria set symptoms that would include one or more of this client's identified syndromes. So in this case, remember with Roger, we've identified trauma symptoms, um, uh, depression symptoms, and, and um, some anxiety symptoms. So, um, there, we, however, we don't just have to think this up. We also have some help. And one of the things to make sure that we think hard is we follow the Othmer rule of five. This comes from um, a, a book by Othmer and Othmer, husband and wife team, um, that no longer is in print, but I love their rule. And they say that when you're trying to do a differential, you should always ask yourself, what are five diagnoses this might be. Why five? Nothing magic about five, except that you can usually come up with a couple, but to get five, you've got to push your thinking a little more. You've got to think a little more broadly. We also need to always consider, could it be a medical condition that's causing these symptoms? or making these symptoms worse that, uh, instead of that are causing the client distress. We also always have to consider, could it be a substance, either a prescription, an over-the-counter drug, or, the, or alcohol, tobacco, or one of the illicit drugs of abuse that are the source of the symptoms? Because physiologically, certain substances can create symptoms that, uh, that are exactly identical to mental disorders. And they still are mental disorders, but they would be called substance uh, induced. The other help I get is in the DSM-5 manual. And in each of the mental disorders, you know, first in the manual, it gives you the criteria. Now, this is not in the little uh, desktop reference book. It's in the full manual. And it, there is a text section called differential diagnoses. And it lists for you diagnoses that it might be instead. And they're listed in order of probability. This is a really helpful aid uh, to help you uh, generate a list. 